Bad 3D renders. It's something a lot of beginner artists make when just starting out in 3D. Nobody likes them and nobody wants to make them. But oftentimes you'll have slaved away on a 3D piece, putting blood, sweat and tears into what you think is a masterpiece. And it turns out like this. That's why in this video, I'm going to showcase three ways to instantly level up your renders. Now, when we're talking about modeling, it's a pretty broad subject, but there's one aspect of it that immediately grounds your model in reality. Let's look at this side by side, for example. This model is essentially just a cube, but tell me, which of these models feels real? You're most likely signing with option B, and you'd be right. The reason why this feels real is because we've given the shape a simple bevel and smoothed the unnatural sharp edges between the two faces. This can be done manually through the modeling tools or simply by adding a bevel modifier. Using this principle is foundational in creating a believable model because almost all objects in the real world have a natural transition between their two edges. So now the modeling looks great, let's move on to the second method. Imperfections are a vital step to bringing your 3D models to a believable standpoint. So let's spruce this up by creating a simple node setup. I'll grab a Musgrave texture, a noise texture, and a mix RGB. Plug the noise into the mix color 1 and the Musgrave height into the mix color 2. From here, we can grab a color ramp, plug the mix RGB into its factor, and finally, plug the color ramp into the roughness socket. Essentially, we now have two procedural textures driving a random value as a mask into the object's roughness. So instead of one singular value telling Blender what is rough and what isn't, we've created a dynamic mask where anything that's black is completely shiny and anything that's white is completely rough. A great trick I use to push this even further is to utilize the map range node. Essentially, we can tell Blender to stop the color values at a certain point using these sliders. In doing so, this stops the material from having absolute black and white areas on the mask that we created, which in the case of this shapes box makes total sense because it's basically cardboard. This is the power of procedural texturing and you can push this to an extensive level to get endless results. Guys, look at all this money my girlfriend made just from selling fake. Compositing is one of those things that a lot of artists, myself included, tend to avoid when just starting out. You can push your final render to a whole nother level with just a few simple nodes. So let's cover some of the main ones that I use to level up my renders. In the compositing tab, we have our render layer and our composite node. Generally, this screen will be blank. So click this use nodes button and control shift click the render layer node to see your composite in real time. Now I'm going to add in the glare node and this comes with a bunch of options, but I find you can kind of just go crazy with this one and it helps your render so much. I usually set it to streaks, rank the mode from medium to high and for the streak amount, go crazy. So this looks pretty good but it can get even better when we separate the glare node and composite it back onto the original image. To do that, we can take the mix ladder and push this to one, then grab a mix node, plug the glare into image one and the render layer into image two. Now, since we're compositing lights onto our image, we need to set the mix method to add. Push the factor to one and you should have some sweet Layer. The last node I use is Lens Distortion. What this does is it allows for your render to have some chromatic aberration and lens distortion around the bounds of your render. The key to this node is to be subtle. If you crank this too far, your render is going to look like a scene from 2001 A Space Odyssey and it's just a bad time. Don't go crazy on this one, please. Now, all you need to do is make sure the fit checkbox is enabled and that everything is hooked into the composite node. These are the settings that I used. So now we know these three methods to improve our renders, but there's still one massive problem I see a lot of people make when they're finalizing their lighting setup. And to fix this, you'll want to watch this video right here. 